Okay, so in this we're going to do some examples based on the formulas we learned in uh, the first um, video for this week. And that is that we're going to find the area and perimeter of the following triangle. Now remember, perimeter from last week is just the sum of the sides. So in this case, there are three sides and they've all been given to you. So you could do 5 plus 12 plus 13. Well, 5 plus 12 plus 13 just equals 30. And so you find out that the perimeter of this triangle is 30. Very simple to do. Area, remember you're going to use your formula, 1 half times the base times the height. Well, in a right triangle, I told you that the base is always one of the legs and the height is always the other leg. So you're going to do 1 half times 12 times 5. Well, when you multiply that out, you also get 30. Answers look the same, but they're not technically the same because perimeter is, is 30 units, whereas area is 30 units squared. Okay, uh, we also want to do some basic examples with circles. If I've got a circle with radius 8, that means I've got a circle in it from the center to the side of the circle is 8. Well, finding the circumference, I gave you a formula that was 2 pi times the radius. Well, the radius is just 8, so it's 2 pi times 8, which gives you 2 times 8 is 16 pi. I don't substitute anything in for pi because I want my answers to be exact, so I leave it as 16 pi. If I want to find the area, remember area is just pi radius squared, so pi times 8 squared. 8 squared is 64, and so your answer is just 64 pi. Very simple as long as you know the radius. Example 3 gives you a diameter instead of a radius. It says find the area and circumference if your diameter is 10. Well, remember that if your diameter is 10, that means all the way across is 10. That means your radius, which would be halfway, of, is always half that, which would be, in this case, 5. So do the same thing above. C equals 2 times pi times 5, that gives you 10 pi, or you could have done uh, pi times diam diameter, that always works as well. Your area is just pi r squared, so pi times 5 squared equals 25 pi. Always pay close attention to whether they give you diameter or if they give you um, radius, because that does make a big difference when solving these problems. Okay, the last couple examples I want to look at um, are examples involved involving shaded regions. Well, if you look at this picture, it says find the area of the shaded region. Well, the shaded region is just the region that's inside this rectangle, but not inside the circle. So the way that you find that is you find the area of the rectangle, which we can find really easily, because I gave you the sides, which would be 12 times 10. So that's 120. And then you subtract away this part that's not shaded. The part that's not shaded is the circle. It has a diameter 6. So hopefully that makes you, rings a bell that your radius is half that, which is 3. And so the area of your circle is just going to be pi times the radius squared, right? Pi r squared. Radius is 3, so 3 squared is 9, so you end up with 9 pi. So the area of the shaded region is the area of the rectangle minus the area of the circle. So it's 120 minus 9 pi. Another one to look at, this one's a little different because you've got less information. You just know that the square has side length 8. Finding the area of that square, because we know we need the area of that square, that's just going to be 8 times 8, or 8 squared, which is 64. But the question is, what's the area of the circle? Well, hopefully you're thinking about this a little bit and noticing that I could just draw a diameter in, and I can see that that diameter must be 8, so the radius must be 4. So the area of the circle is just 4 squared, which equals, or 4 squared pi, right, pi r squared, which equals 16 pi. So the area of this whole thing is going to be 64, the area of the square, minus the area of the circle, which is 16 pi. Now these problems can be done in lots of different ways. The, the square could be inside the circle, and so you just turn things around. Um, you can have problems where you only have a fourth of a circle, for instance, this, you can, if you can imagine, if you had a problem like that, you would solve it like we just did and then divide that answer by 4 because this is the fourth of the entire circle. Um, you could also have a problem like this where you have rectangles inside rectangles and you just find the area of the big rectangle and subtract away the area of the small rectangles. There, there are lots of different ways you could do it. You could have, on the example 5, I could have given you the radius. I could have said the radius is 4 which would have helped you find the area of the circle, but then you'd have to use your thoughts a little bit to get to the um, side of the square as 8. 
Uh, so there's lots of different ways you can, you can have these types of problems.